This is David Valley, hydrologist in charge here at the Northeast River Forecast Center in Taunton, Massachusetts. This is the first in a five-part series of vignettes that will be discussing the Great New England Hurricane of 1938 and the classic characteristics of our breed of hurricane here in the Northeast. The beautiful poem that's presented on the left-hand slide was written by a young sophomore student at Westerly High School in May of 1938 by the name of Philip Green. Philip's dad happened to be the publisher of the Westerly newspaper at that time. And as you read this, consider that little did Philip know, at the time he wrote this, how accurately he actually described the terror and devastation that would strike southern New England during the late afternoon and evening of September 21, 1938. And the days later, as these headlines presented in the Westerly Sun, the community of Mesquamic it wiped out, Napatry Point gone, 50 dead, and scores missing. The 1938 hurricane brought with it all of the classic hazards that are associated with a landfalling hurricane here in the northeast. Widespread damaging winds strong enough to shear off church steeples and blow the roofs off factory buildings inland. Torrential rainfall of well over a half a foot in just a day's time, which resulted in widespread record river and small stream flooding. And the devastating storm surge, on the order of 10 to as much as 15 feet, leveling coastal community after coastal community. In the storm's wake, 600 lives were lost, 63,000 people were left homeless in the northeast, with 8,900 homes and buildings completely destroyed. Over 3,300 boats were lost, along with 26,000 automobiles, as well as approximately 2 billion trees throughout New England. New England tropical cyclones have a very unique behavior unto themselves. Every one of our major landfalling systems has undergone some type of what we call extratropical transition. This is a complex transition where the system is leaving its pure tropical state to becoming more winter-like. Every one of our systems was also interacting with a strong jet stream which in turn aids in its acceleration toward New England. The average forward motion for all of our landfalling systems here in New England is an incredible 33 miles an hour with storms like the 1938 hurricane estimated to have been traveling at over 50 miles an hour. These complex interactions drive the different characteristics that we see such as the heaviest rainfall and the greatest threat for river and small stream flooding lying along and west of the storm track. In contrast, the highest winds and the greatest storm surges are focused on the ocean or eastern side of the storm. New England has experienced active and inactive periods of tropical cyclone activity since the early 1900s. We believe that this is in part related to the sea surface temperature structure in the tropical Atlantic. The tropical Atlantic experiences extended periods of warmth and cooler than normal temperatures. In the diagram presented above, you can see that in the mid-1930s through the early 1960s, New England was the recipient of quite a number of tropical cyclones. This happens to correspond with one of the warm cycles in the tropical Atlantic. In contrast, when those ocean temperatures are cooler than normal, we typically see a reduction in tropical cyclone activity here in the Northeast, and that is shown in that period of inactivity between the mid-1960s into the early 1990s. For New England, our prime time for a major hurricane strike is usually from mid to late August into early October. This is due in part to the climatological normal time for maximum sea surface temperatures along our coastline, but is also due in part to that jet stream interaction where we have the first vestiges of a cool autumn outbreak of air meeting up with the last vestiges of summer's warmth playing off to our south. In part two of our series, I'll be discussing the aspects of acceleration and the devastating heavy rainfall and stream flooding, which often accompanies cyclones that make landfall here in the northeast. I will be utilizing our past experiences with storms such as Irene, Carol, and Floyd to illustrate how this behavior presents itself, and we'll compare the 1938 hurricane to some of our more recent systems.